recently Ableton released Push as part of Ableton Live 9. And the point of Ableton's push is to really bring production back to kind of the, the physical world, you know, using your ears and your hands like an instrument, rather than kind of having the focus on the laptop screen. But when I got push, I decided to try to see if push would be the right instrument for something I've wanted to do for a while. And that is the concept of live production. Live production meaning that I would just start with no pre-recorded audio, just a couple samples, and I would be able to throw a tune together so fast that it actually sounded like I was performing it. And in doing so, I would kind of meld these two worlds that I belong to, the world of performance and the world of production. So in my live set here, I have no pre-recorded audio, I have no loops. I just have some drum racks, which are full of samples. And I also have some synth pads and leads that I've built. Now, the other things that I'll be using for this set is a controller here, uh, the Nano Control 2. And what these knobs are controlling is they are controlling a set of DJ effects that are in my master track. And these are actually effects that, as a level six instructor, that I teach students to build. So the only track that I've prepared here in the set is a sidechain kick. And the sidechain kick is just a four to the floor kick that you can't hear, but really just makes the music pump a bit more in time. And this is covered more extensively here in New York in our six level Ableton course and online. Finally, I have these phones, and what's coming through the phones is just a simple click for the parts where the music drops out and I have to play something in, in time. Now, if we take a look at the push, when we go to a drum rack, uh, and I have a drum rack right here uh, in this track, and in this drum rack, I've put several, you know, mostly drum sounds, uh, so, you know, kicks, snares, hi-hats, etc. So, to the left here, in these yellow squares, we see where everything is assigned. To the right, each of these squares represents one bar. There are two ways, really, to essentially to program drums into the push. One is that you hit the record button, and you set up one bar right here, and just go ahead and play it. Now, right here is a button which uh, represents quantize. So if I hit the quantize, it will quantize it according to the quantize settings that I've selected. Here, 1 16th and 100% quantization with zero swing. And I can add some swing or reduce the quantize amount. I think this method is better if you're really a good finger drummer. I'm really, actually, I'm not. I use the second method, which is programming, in a sense, the step sequencer. So the way you program the step sequencer is, again, you hit the button to the right, and you press the play button. Now, there are 16 notes here, so they represent 16th notes. I can actually adjust that here. So here, I could set it so it represents eighth notes, so each step is an eighth, uh, or 32nd notes here, which takes up all of the um, squares. Now, I'm going to set it to 16th notes, and then I select a drum, say here the kick, and I can just go ahead and just program it which, where I want the kick uh, on which 16ths. Now, from here, I pick another instrument, the snare, and I can program where I want the snares to fall. Now, what I was doing live is, is just quickly kind of moving to get some variation with the drum sound. Is basically quickly hitting some of them in different sixteenths. Like create little fills. Or even like a whole build. You can also kind of quickly create variation with the push's drum loops by using this button here, which I found very useful, which is the double button to the left. So with the double button, you hit it, and it basically will move the loop brace over. So if we look here in the screen, we see that the we can see my beat programmed here, and with the double, we've seen that the whole loop brace has shifted, as has the beat. Now, you can make a variation here. So for here, I'll add like a clap. And what's kind of cool is then I can move the loop brace around. So now I can set it back to the first one, the second one.
like so. And so that actually enables me to quickly create variation and also for live performance to, to kind of create a whole series of drum parts and then quickly move between them. The second major part of the push that I used for this live set is the scale mode. Now, you get the, the scale mode if you move to, so here I am in the drum rack, but if you move to any of the instruments, uh, so any of the synths, you get a screen that looks like this. To the right here is a button that says scales. We press that, basically we can pull up here a whole series of scales and, and for this performance I used a, uh, a minor scale here and specifically F minor. Now you have two options, you have fixed and you have chromatic. So with fixed you get a screen that looks like this, just a series of blue and white buttons. Now the blue button represents the tonic of the scale. And so the way it works is essentially you move from between the octaves using patterns that are actually very similar to a guitar or a bass neck. Meaning that this button right directly above is a perfect fourth above and a perfect fourth above. And again, as a bass player, I found this actually quite intuitive. I personally like to use the chromatic mode just because for me, I like notes that are outside of the scale when I create lines and when I create melodies. So you can still see what's in the scale though because the scale is lit white here and these grayed out notes are basically not part of the uh, scale. So the other thing I wanted to show you here is the, uh, the slider to the left. Which I actually used a lot during the uh, performance. And you can assign it to different parameters. In this case, I have it assigned to a pitch. So it becomes a pitch bend effect. So I just want to share a couple of the techniques that I use to, to make the live production set possible. One thing that I found was really useful are these buttons here up on the top of the push. Now, the red, wh what the red represents is essentially you, s you hit that to select which of the tracks you want to work with. Uh, so say if I wanted to go back here to my step sequencer, my drum track, I would hit this and you know, the red end would come up and et cetera, et cetera. Now, you can kind of quickly drop elements or add elements by these bottom buttons right here. And these are basically our assigned to the track activate buttons that you see in Ableton Live. So right now I have all of them playing but I can quickly do drops. Now another kind of trick I came up with as well is actually using these uh, buttons down here to move between scenes. You can actually get some really kind of like interesting rhythmic contrasts by doing that. So if you see it's quickly jumping between scenes. You can learn more about Dubspot's music production with Ableton at dubspot.com. And you can learn more about my stuff at danfreeman.com. Thanks a lot for watching. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.